What's up, everybody? Let's see if I can... Why is it not showing up? Oh. So we're going to be doing some audiobook recording here in just a moment. Just getting logged in. Really? Sweet. Just going and updating my uh, info here and all my different stuff. Twitter. One thing that's weird is that pretty much each of these services has a different category for what I'm doing. Nobody has audiobooks. That would be awesome if they did. Maybe I should just like email them. I don't know. But let me see. Stay quick. Twitter. All right. Cool. All right. All done. Sorry, that's super boring. <clears throat> All right. So let's go ahead. Uh, let me pull up my spreadsheet here, see where I was. Also, we are still doing free games for new followers. So anybody following, uh, any new followers, will get a free game out of the deal, which I think is pretty awesome. 
That's not what I wanted to bring up. has already had it open, which is a lie. All right, so page 86 <coughs> is where we took off. Okay, so I believe we're in chapter 8. 7, 7. Hopefully we will be able to close the book on chapter 7. Got a little over an hour, so there should be plenty of time, I'd hope. Oh, interesting. I think my, uh, Twitter's actually hooked up to the wrong. Uh, so it's one of the pages because it looks like that page was posting there. Awesome. Well, I'll worry about that later. You guys aren't here to see me take care of my nonsense. So. get I need to have these uh, announcements already put somewhere you live in you learn So let's see where I was at. Okay. So. Okay, so let's close that up. I'm going to do a quick render here. It does just make the tracks easier uh, if I don't have to scroll all the way down. Let me see. While it's doing that, I'll use you. Uh, for anybody watching, I'm curious to see what you think of the new green screen setup. Um, basically, just got that in today and was dying to try it out. So, let me know what you think. If you think it's cool, if you think it's lame. I think it's pretty cool, just personally. Let's see, entertainment, that's fine. Changing that. God, really, I've been streaming 10 minutes already. Uh, a little bit longer on this render. Uh, this feels like a pretty long chapter so far. Nice. Okay, it actually did update it on Hitbox, which is awesome. I 
don't think I still don't think you can hear my stuff. Bizarre sounds coming from somewhere outside. So I know this is not supremely interesting. Probably just a cat fight out there. Uh, no. Don't want to save that. That's nothing. Okay. Oh, and I'm still. There's probably a good echo on the here. When I'm not streaming, I actually listen to the uh, device as I'm doing it. And so. Playback devices. Thanks for your patience, everybody. I know this is not the most exciting thing in the world. Optical. Interesting. I think I've got a weird. Let's see here. I'm curious what is on what. Speakers. That should not be there. That should be on a different device. So that is going to be on digital output, optical. Curious far from that cave, but I will write about that later. There we go. I've got some weird stuff on some different things here. So let me go, so it's gonna be digital output. Well, you can you can hear the recording now. So that's that's my main thing. I'll figure out the rest on my time. So I am I'm bringing up my chat now. So anybody has questions, please just feel free to uh, shoot them over. And um, I've got my notification. Yep, got my notification going on there. So essentially, I will hear whenever you put something in the chat. Um, it is synchronized, so just give it a couple minutes to actually reach back to me. And uh, that'll help quite a bit. And if I don't get to you right away because I don't hear it or I'm in the middle of a long read, uh, again, just please be patient. Thanks so much. Um, I will definitely get to it. Promise. Okay. So. All right. Let's go ahead and get started. Test, test. All right. Let's go ahead and 
All right. Just wanted to make sure the actual audio was coming through. Right about that later. All right. Is this chapter seven? Yep. All right. <clears throat> Already about 28 and a half minutes into chapter seven. Um, still got a little less than 10 pages to go. So let's get cooking. Once we arrived at Talbot House, we found someone waiting for us. Siobhan, in the company of three shady and unkempt gypsies, greeted us with a red face. She was angry with Maggie for going out with me, a gauge, without her consent. I tried to calm her down, telling her that Maggie had simply helped me look for some herbs. Obviously, I lied, for somehow, and luckily so, I didn't want the gypsies to know about the cave. Siobhan, ignoring me, starting... Oops, not ignoring, ignored. Siobhan... Siobhan ignored me and started spewing forth a stream of questions at her granddaughter in her unintelligible language. Maggie stood there, eyes to the ground, unable or unwilling to bark back. After a while, annoyed by this ugly episode I was forced to watch, I raised my voice, reminding my visitors that they were standing on my grounds and that I expected them to behave in proper decorum or I would have them leave. After a while, annoyed by this ugly episode I was forced to watch, I raised my voice, reminding my visitors that they were standing on my grounds and then to behave in proper decorum or I would have them leave. Uh, I don't really like that. No, 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 no. to bark back. After a while, annoyed by this ugly episode I was forced to watch, I raised my voice, reminding my visitors that they were standing on my grounds and that I expected them to behave in proper decorum or I would have them leave. At that Two of the gypsies moved toward me in a threatening way. I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. The tallest one told me to keep my mouth shut and go inside the house. I stared straight into his eyes and stood firm, rebuking that he had to force me to do so if he dared. Ah, no. The tallest one told me to keep my mouth shut and go inside the house. I stared straight into his eyes and stood firm, rebuking that he had to force me to do so if he dared. He told me to keep my mouth shut and go inside the house. I stared straight into his eyes and stood firm, rebuking that he had to force me to do so if he dared. My resoluteness... Resoluteness... My resoluteness. My resoluteness didn't seem to dissuade him, and he got closer, towering above me. The other, a shorter but stocky individual, stepped sideways and came behind me, while the third one, a weasel looking fella, retrieved a whip from his own cart and cracked it to the earth, smiling in anticipation for a good fight. Things didn't go for the worst, luckily, for Maggie shouted something in Romany, and Siobhan snapped an order to them. Immediately, the two goons backed off, the tall one keeping his dark eyes on mine and the weasel replacing the whip back. The bugger was that?
Things didn't go for the worst, luckily, for Maggie shouted something in Romany, and Siobhan snapped an order to them. Immediately, the two goons backed off, the tall one keeping his dark eyes on mine, and the weasel replacing the whip back. One moment, I'll be right back. Well, I have no idea what that was. It's always buggering weird whenever you have strange sounds in the night, of course. Oh, bugger, what's that? Okay. Sorry about that. The stream is pretty terrible. I'm not... I don't know. I'm working in a relatively small space, so... It's not ideal, but, well... We, uh... We do what we can. But I appreciate everyone who actually coming and uh, and watching. It does mean a lot. So let me just uh, trim this off here. One keeping his dark eyes on mine and the weasel replacing the whip back. Then the old woman told Maggie and the men to go to the Vardo and wait there. 
The gypsies seemed reluctant to do so, but a stern look from Siobhan was enough to have them comply. Remembering everything this nice woman had done for me, I didn't want to argue with her. After all, I understood her concerns over her granddaughter. After all, I understood her concerns over her granddaughter. Ah, there's a little hitch there. After all, I understood her concerns over her granddaughter. I tried to reason with her, but she cut me short. I've seen ye. I know what you did with Maggie, she spat out those words with animosity. Be lucky I don't curse ye, yet be warned. Stay away from Maggie. She turned and went into... Ah, bugger. I kind of want to... I've seen ye. I know what you did with Maggie, she spat What you did with me, Maggie. Dang. Bugger. Siobhan is not my favorite character to voice. But she's interesting. And you don't grow as a performer. You don't grow in anything without struggling. And I, I definitely struggle. And while that's not comfortable at the time, I definitely think I am coming up better for it. I've seen ye. I know what ye did with me, Maggie. She spat those words. Ah, bugger. She spat out those words. I've seen ye. I know what ye did with me, Maggie. She spat out those words with animosity. Be lucky I don't curse ye. Yet be warned. Stay away from Maggie. She turned and went to the wagon, ignoring my protests and my attempts. And my attempts. She turned. She turned and went on. Bugger. I need to actually read what's on the page. She turned and went to the wagon, ignoring my protests and my attempt to dialogue. Sometimes it's difficult to get in a rhythm. She turned and went to the wagon, ignoring my protests and protests. Away from Maggie. She turned and went to the wagon. Ignoring my protests and my attempts to dialogue, Maggie glanced at me, looking guilty, but didn't say a word. Then, at the crack of the driver's whip, the two black horses pulling the gypsy wagon bolted down the road. I watched them disappear from my sight, my anger still seething. I felt offended and, at the same time, sorry for Maggie. There was nothing I could do, so I went inside the house. However, it soon came to my mind that I still had time to visit Father Wales and find out about that slab. Find out about the slab. However, it soon came to my mind that I still had time to visit Father Wales and find out about the slab. Also, I wanted to know more about the nursery rhyme, for it was now clear that it didn't refer to the Great Famine, but to the deeds and eventual fate of Annie Carrick. I felt that Father Wales had deliberately lied to me about the ballad's origins. Besides, after my bad encounter with the gypsies and the way they had looked at me, I thought it would be a good idea to speak to the constable too if he was still in town. Thus, I mounted on the trap and sped down to Ballymore. Thus... Thus, I mounted on the trap and sped down to Ballymore. No, that's too hot. Thus, I mounted on the trap and sped down to Ballymore. Good idea to speak to the constable too, if he was still in town. Thus, I mounted on the trap and sped down to Ballymore. (laughs) 
I found out that Constable Smale was visiting Squire Douglas' widow and wouldn't be back at the inn until late. Yet Father Wales was at home when I knocked at his door. He looked quite surprised to see me. Nonetheless, he invited me in and asked his housekeeper to make some tea. It was a nice one, accompanied with scrumptious cookies. We were enjoying this dark tea in Wales study when I told him about the slab and my rough translation of it. He almost choked, then put his cup down, spilling some of the content, and instinctively touched the silver crucifix dangling from his neck. He tried to evade the conversation. Again, proof that although he doesn't believe much in Dark Annis legend, he's afraid of speaking about that slate. He asked me if I knew about the gypsy camp at the lakes. I told him what had happened this afternoon, and how it was my intention to report their unwanted, if rude and threatening visit to the constable. He looked shocked and convened to report the trespassing as soon as possible, since many others in town had been complaining about the gypsies skulking about their homes. However, I didn't want the conversation to rail off, so I quickly went back to the slate. However, I didn't want the conversation to rail off, so I quickly went back quickly. Yes, I can feel whenever the words don't come out right. However, I didn't want the conversation to rail off, so I quickly went back to the slate. Cornered, Father Wales understood my determination to know more, and he promised to tell me the whole story once back from a certain duty, and, excusing himself, he disappeared into the church. While waiting for him, I took the opportunity to check out his library. The shelves are full of religious texts, of course. No, no, that's a different... The shell... The shelves are full of religious texts, of course, but I also spotted some books on history, poetry, and Irish folklore. I pulled out an old tome titled A Guide to the Folk of the Hollow Hills, and to my surprise, I discovered a smaller book laying behind it, flat against the wall. What a discovery! This book is Ars Goetia. That is probably not how that's spelled. A I S G O E T I A. Let's let's go to the Google because uh, yeah. Okay, pronunciation. You should know Google. Oh, is this Emma? Emma, thank you, Emma. Goetia, Middle Latin. Really? Goetia, Middle Latin. Goetia? That's not... I figured it would have been something else, but it's actually pretty interesting. Hmm. <laughs> Invocation of the angels of the demons. Interesting. I do love all that I'm learning about this. It is absolutely fascinating. All right. This book. to go ahead and move that up so you guys can actually see the form I'm using. I spend more time down at the bottom than I do anywhere else, so it's not too bad. Well, what a discovery. Okay. What a discovery. All right. This book is Ars Goetia, based on the infamous grimoire, The Key of Solomon. It refers to practices which include the invocation of angels and demons, to the binding of infernal creatures under the oof, subservience. That was at least something this good. This book is Ars Goetia. 
based on the infamous grimoire, The Key of Solomon. It refers to practices which include the invocation of angels and demons, to the binding of infernal creatures under the subservience of a wizard, and it includes the description of spells and wards, an occult book written or translated by an unknown author. The book is leather-bound, small, roughly an octavo, an octavo, octavo size, My pronunciation is very American, so Octavo. Hello, Emma. Octavo. Octavo. The A is what's important there. All right. An Octavo. Octavo, an octavo, octavo. The book is leather bound. I want to actually hear that last bit. Or translated by an unknown author. The book by an unknown by an unknown author. The book is leather bound, small, roughly an octavo size, and heavily damaged. Its pages are yellowed and some of the illustrations have faded. However, what made this an important discovery is the fact that it had belonged to none other than Hugh Talbot. On the first page, handwritten in black ink, spidery letters declare his ownership. Hugh Talbot. On the first page, handwritten in black ink, spidery letters declare his ownership on the first on the first page handwritten in black ink spidery letters declare his ownership inside there are dozens and dozens of annotations addenda queer drawings all scribbled around the pages just behind the back cover there's a note written by someone else for the hand is clearly different it says Bless the sun, for the darkness cannot stand bright light. As I read this, I heard someone calling my name in a hushed, almost hissing tone. I turned my head. It had come from the window. And there, on the outside, a shadow crossed the frame. More confused than scared, I replaced the book in its hiding place. I didn't want Father Wales catching me in the very indelicate act of intruding into his secrets then moved to the window. No one out there, except an ugly back... Bagger. Except... Except an ugly blackbird, a crow or a rook probably, perched on one of the tombstones lining the church's yard, its silvery eyes like mirrors in the dying sunlight. It moved its head nervously, looking at me one eye at a time. Then it cawed and burst into a sudden flight, straight toward the window's pane. Instinctively, I backed, startled by that irrational attack. The bird hit the glass, bounced on it, and fell to the ground where it writhed and jerked before finally ceasing to move. Incredulous, I looked at the glass, stained with blood. I couldn't believe my eyes. The voice of Father Wales shook me out of my stupor. I didn't understand at first what he was saying, then I realized he was asking me if I wished for more tea. I pointed to the window and told him what had just happened, but my... I pointed... Oops. I pointed to the window and told him what had just happened, but when my eyes returned to the glass, there was no trace of blood. And outside, no dead bird. Now, I have to stop my narration to explain exactly why I think this was a hallucination caused by drugs put in my tea. I honestly don't know if Father Wales is part of this conspiracy, for he seems willing to share information with me, but his housekeeper surely is. Miss Henrietta O'Reilly is cousin to Bruce the Smith. Yes, the same man who had warned Squire Douglas to stay away from the Standing Stone. 
I believe some of the locals are up to something. Maybe the slab hides a secret meeting place for the Covenanters, the last vestiges of a failed revolt, or worse. One thing is for sure, they don't want me here, especially in Talbot House. <clears throat> that was pretty good. The last vestiges of a failed revolt, or worse. One thing is for sure, they don't want me here, especially in Talbot House. A little hot, so I'll just pull back a little bit. Actually, let me. It did freeze just a little bit. Uh, forgive. I want to go ahead and just check, make sure the audio. I do believe record some of properly. the locals are up to something. Maybe the slab hides a secret meeting place for the Covenanters the last vestiges of a failed revolt, or worse. One thing is for sure. No, no, it's good. All right. Moving on. However, then, at the church, I wasn't thinking about a conspiracy or spiked tea. I thought what I had seen was real. Scared, I decided I had enough, and thinking that, after all, none of this was my business, I resolved to pack my stuff and return to Dublin. I believed the priest had been looking at me as if I were either pulling a prank or being truly insane. Thus, in order to dismiss any ill thoughts, I said that the light had played a trick on me and that probably I had seen a large moth hit the glass. I feigned an embarrassed laugh, then sat down, prompting the priest to tell me the slab's story. Father Wales chuckled along, then he questioned if it was some if it was off of bar. Let's try that again. Father Wales questioned if it was opportune of him. Father Wales chuckled along, then he questioned mm, questioned. Let's get a drink here. Father Wales chuckled along, then he questioned if it was opportune of him to tell me such a grisly story just before sundown. Nervously, I insisted, and finally he complied. It is known that after being ordained by Bishop Lugidus, no, 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 that's not good. Lugidus? Lugidus? Let us try. Oh, my. Well, Kevin of Glendalow, definitely. Lugidus. Lugidus. Hmm. Ecclesiastical record. Kill allow, written early. Several forms of Luocus, Luanus, and Lugidus. Lugidus. Well, that's probably as close as I'm going to get to an actual pronunciation. Uh, if Emma doesn't actually tell me, I don't actually know. So, here I am. Fair enough. Let's do this. All right. Oh, and I should be going to a light Irish. A light Irish. It is known that after being ordained by Bishop Lugidus, Kevin moved to a cave in Glendalow in order to avoid the company of his followers. There, he was rumored to have banished a monster that lived in one of the lakes and to have accomplished other miraculous feats. I don't know if that pulled that off. There, he was rumored to have banished a monster that lived in one of the lakes and to have accomplished other miraculous feats. He had an extraordinary closeness to nature, his only companions, the animals and the plants around him. In Glendalough, 
He lived as a hermit for seven years, wearing only animal skins, sleeping on stones, and eating very sparingly. He went barefoot and spent his time in prayer. Despite his will to remain alone, disciples were soon attracted to Kevin, and a further settlement was established near the lake shore. St. Kevin became their teacher, and by the year of our Lord 540, his fame as a holy man had spread far and wide. Many people came to seek his help and guidance. In time, Glendalo grew into a renowned seminary of saints and scholars. It became the parent of several other monasteries. By the 6th century, most of the Leinster region had been converted to Christianity. However, some isolated rural communities still had strong... Mm. What's going good there? However... However, some isolated rural communities still held strong to many ancient and pagan traditions. Such was the case of a tribe of Kruithni. Ooh, Kru Kruithni. Kruithni. Let's let's look at this. That one up. How to pronounce Kruithni? That's exactly what I want. Kruithni. 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 All right. Let's give that a low. Okay. Such was the case of a tribe of Kruithni. Huh. Actually got it right. That's amazing. Such was the case of a tribe of Kruithni savages who lived in the Glen Cree Valley. I had never heard of this... Nope, oh, nope. It's no longer speaking. Ancient and pagan traditions. Such was the case of a tribe of Kruithni... I'm to get rid of that. That breath. A little bit. And pagan traditions. Such was the case of a tribe of Kruithni savages who lived in the Glen Cree Valley. There we go. Fantastic. I had never heard of this tribe, so I... So I... Blah, blah, blah. I had never heard of this tribe, so I interrupted his tale to know more. It seems that the Kruithni were relatives of the Scottish Picts, and like them, they have been completely eradicated from history. Their existence signaled only by the chronicles of more civilized people. Father Wales, being a passionate historian, has collected notes and tales on this vanished tribe. Notes and tales. Has collected notes and tales on this vanished tribe. has collected tales on this oh bugger bugger saying it ah uh, well how would you say it then and what what exactly am i saying wrong father wales being a passionate historian Historian has collected notes and tales on this vanished tribe. There we go. Lies people. Father Wales, being a passionate historian, has collected notes and tales on this vanished tribe. Okay. I know you're just giving me. Give me a hard time, so it's fine. I appreciate you coming to visit. They were simple, living in crude dwellings made of wood and animal skins, so, obviously, no trace has ever been found of their villages. 
Father Wales continued, The creatine of Glencree, like the ravenous wolves and the whose skins... Woof. Nope. The creatine of... The Kurithni of Glenclee. Blah, blah, blah. The Kurithni of Glencree. Oh, I, maybe I stick to the right accent. The Kurithni of Glencree, like the ravenous wolves in whose skins they were clad, used to raid upon the Gale farms, raping, looting, murdering, and, so it was said, Consuming the flesh of their victims. Ah. Was said. Consuming the flesh of their victims. Consuming the flesh of their victims. On learning of these godless acts, St. Kevin rallied an army of true believers and marched to holy war to rid Ireland of these devil spawns. In this book, he showed me a large and antique tome, apparently written by one of St. Kevin's followers. Ooh, there's another name. Brian Nain. Brian, Brian Nain. Brian Nain? Brian Nain? Oh, the words, words are difficult. Uh, in Irish, that's that's preferable. Daining, 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 daining. Brainin, brainin, brainin. All right, fair, fair enough. All right. By one of Saint Kevin's followers. Brainin, one of the Cenobites, mu again, whew. when it's not my own language, I'd rather look than be wrong. Cenobite, ah, Emma, thank you. Cenobite or Cenobite? Cenobite, let's see. How would they say it? Cenobite. 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 Briannon, one of the Cenobites. One of the Cenobites. Briannon, one of the Cenobites. Yeah, the, the E in the Briannon. Probably Cenobite. Let's follow us. Briannon, one of the... Briannon. Briannon. So I don't even like that. He showed me a large and antique tome. Let's, let's just record that whole set again. Devil of Spawns. In this book, he showed me a large and antique tome, apparently written by one of St. Kevin's followers. Brainan, one of the Cenobites, monks who lived in a monastery, as opposed to the Anchorites who lived in the... <laughs> as opposed... As opposed to the Anchorites who lived as hermits that accompanied St. Kevin to Glencree, recounts that the Crithni lived around a stone hinge, aye, the same one which sits behind Talbot House. Not built by them, they revered it as a place of communion with their goddess, Moriogain. <sighs> Moriogain. Moriogain? Morrigan? Mor I imagine it's Morgan, but... Ah, took me back a whole page. I know this isn't the most exciting thing, but this is this is this is voiceover work. When you're provided with information, or you're provided with, uh, you know, a script, or 
you know, a piece to read. Um, you want to actually go in and get it right. So, oh, no, I don't. Ugh. More real game. Morian. 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 Fantastic. Morian. Morian. Okay. Morio game. <laughs> Not right at all. Union with their goddess. Mor goddess Morian. The Queen of Shades. Morian, the Queen of Shades. Saint Kevin's army fell on the marauders, surprising them at dawn. Amid the bog, the two forces clashed in a bloody battle until sundown. By day's end, Kevin's forces were victorious, and the Holy Cross stood tall on the ashes of the Carithny village. Those pagans, not killed in the brutal fighting, were dragged before Saint Kevin to receive his judgment. The holy man offered them redemption and salvation if they would accept the cross and convert, but to the last one of them they refused. Like rabbit dogs they barked and howled, cursing the gales and their god. Now just beneath the stone hinge lay a cave. Inside this cave there was a deep hole, which the Carithni proclaimed it reached into the very bowels of the earth where the goddess offspring was supposed to thrive. Unwilling to order the arbitrary execution of the prisoners, evil as they were and heinous as their crimes may have been, Kevin ordered the savages to be thrown into the hole along with the corpses. Of the sixty prisoners taken that day, no man, nor woman, nor child was spared this judgment. Because they worshipped the darkness, they became part of it. St. Kevin ordered the hole to be sealed with a flat stone, upon which he placed a mark a magical ward able to keep the darkness away. The saint's idea was that the degenerated would die of thirst or starvation, thus leaving no blood on his hands. And that was the end of it. The saint's idea was that the degenerated would die Whoa. of thirst. The degenerated. So oh. wait. The saint's idea was that the degenerated would die of thirst or starvation, thus leaving no blood on his hands. And that was the end of it. However, I felt he was purportedly hiding the rest, for that story, true or not, would not explain why no one had ever tried to remove a holy relic attributed to one of the most reverenced, most revered, far, attributed to... attributed to one of the most revered saints of Ireland in centuries, and this I questioned. Father Wales admitted that there was more. Legends say that the marauders didn't die. He moved to the library and showed me another book. This document is from the time when my... Nah. This... This document is from the time when Vikings began to settle on the coast. This tome was even bigger and had pictorial illustrations of strange creatures, half man, half dog, dining on human bones. For as crude as they are, these medieval drawings have certainly upset me because I can't shake them from my head. I sound winded. What does that mean? <laughs> Like, like tired? Like tired winded? This is supposed to be an old man. An old Irish man. So. That's pretty much kind of what I'm going for a little bit. Or you mean breathy? No, let me listen. This tome was even bigger and had pictorial illustrations of strange creatures. Half no, man, no, half no. dog. Father Wales admitted that there was more. 
Legends say that the marauders didn't die. He moved to the library and showed me another book. This document is from the time when Vikings began to settle on the coast. This tome was even bigger and had pictorial illustrations of strange creatures, half man, half dog, dining on human bones. For as crude as they are, these medieval drawings have certainly upset me because I can't shake them from my head. Also, the protagonist of the story at this point is starting to question his sanity. So, and it is getting late in the evening for this, so... Um, if you can be more specific... I mean, does it sound bad? And I know I'm still talking in an accent. It's much easier for me to keep it than uh, to switch back and forth on a regular basis, so... Uh, I just end up keeping it and just kind of going with that. I can't shake them from my head. All right, I'm almost there. Uh, when I finish the chapter, I'm going to go ahead and stop because uh, it definitely is late. Weird Twitter followers. I don't know why I get some of the bizarre ones, but hey, at least this, at least there's some, you know. Um, right. See, so yeah, I think I've got a couple more pages. Oops. Oh my. No, actually, I've got a fair amount to go. That's what I think. This is a, this is a fairly long chapter. This chapter is probably going to clock in close to an hour. Uh, let's see here. Blood on his hands. Uh, minutes from the dark. But the seventh century, lock of the knock. Okay, not there. Like whatever dogs. Come on. From my head. Bugger. There we go. Oh, I was right there. Okay. By the seventh century, the Loch Lanark had a set. Loch Lanark. Lach Lenach. By the seventh century, the Lach Lenach had a settlement where Bray now stands. It was named Dun Lag. Ah, oh, my goodness. This is fantastically difficult and a lot of names. The ones with names tend to go a bit slower. Layer. Really? Layer. 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 So, OGH seems to be a favorite of theirs to not say at all. It's... It, I, my head. My head. By the seventh century, the Loch Lanark had a settlement where Bray now stands. It was named Dun Lair. Dun Lair. 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 O G H. They just don't say. 
should learn that by now. But I haven't, and well, probably will look it up 10 to 12 different more times uh, as I go. But that's fine. That's completely all right. Happy. Uh, let's see. It was named Dunlair. It was... It was named Dunlair, even if some historians confute this, for they say that the port was actually an Uy Brian outpost. Are you I thought he'll be <laughs> Oh the computer ones are absolutely just awful. I think I've oh, British, Irish. I think I looked this up already. Right, so these an ui. Oh, an ui. Oh, that's right. It's either letter. Just make a choice. Say i or u. A or i. A or i. All right. I, Brian. A, uh, Brian. Actually, an I, Brian outpost. All right, that's fine. Oi, Brian outpost. Oi, Brian. I, Brian outpost. But this isn't what's important here. In this book, written by Guar Mark Domhnall, an inhabitant of the Rathmine, who later took his vows and joined the monks at Glendalough, it is recorded a series of terrible events that befell Glencree in the year of our Lord, 840, and how the gales of Rathmoyne, of Rathmoyne, oi, and how the, oi, and how the gales of Rathmoyne, who had founded the hamlet to escape the Loch Lennox raids on the coast, ended up joining forces with the invaders against a terrible menace from the dark. Okay, that's a pretty good place to stop. Got work in the morning. So, and that is exactly at the end of a page. So, I can update my pages. <clears throat> so, we're now up through page 92. And uh, page-wise, I am at 45... 0.77%. And so, really, oh, I'm probably actually, I can see exactly how long I've been streaming. One hour and 14 minutes. So, 74 minutes. See, what was I at? 86 to 92. So six pages in <laughs> 74 minutes. Uh, no, I mean, to be fair, probably the first 10, 15 minutes were just me jacking with stuff trying to do that. So let's just say, let's give it an hour, a page per 10 minutes. Doesn't sound great. Uh, some pages, uh, honestly, there's been other parts of this that have gone much, much quicker. Uh, basically just because uh, there weren't quite so many names. I didn't have to look up quite so much. So not a huge issue, but it's relevant. So um, so here's the deal. Basically, 
I've got a little over uh, so seven, eight, nine days to do this uh, to basically get this completed. So probably going to be foregoing my game streams and uh, specifically on Tuesday, Thursday, um, much more likely to be uh, doing recording. I need to make some good headway on this as it's just... Uh, it's just very important to me that I go ahead and finish things. So, so yeah. Um, thanks again for everybody who did join the stream. Looks like we had, uh, you know, a handful of views on each platform here, which is awesome. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, we had about eight views here on. Uh, Here on Beam, Hitbox. I can't actually remember what it was before. Maybe we didn't actually get any here. Uh, but it is Art and Creative. I'm curious. Huh. That's kind of cool. There is uh, only two Art and Creative uh, streams going on right now. So, interesting. But yeah, uh, so that's, that's actually pretty good. Um, pretty good heading for this. Anyways, um, if you like the stream, you know, appreciate you guys uh, liking, subscribing, um, following. Um, I'll be on tomorrow night, I imagine probably about 9, 9.30 uh, Central Standard Time. I'm going to go ahead and set up an event on uh, YouTube. Uh, or I'm sorry, an event on Facebook. Uh, so everybody uh, follow Kennedy New Media uh, on Facebook because that is where basically all of this is kind of culminating to. Um, company I've just launched as uh, a new media company, essentially going to have all of my different things, uh, my gaming, game development, streaming, all of that under uh, kind of this one one uh, label so really do appreciate all you guys' support um, so go to our new Facebook page give that a like um, also I'm getting uh, some art in for my stream overlays um, hopefully that should be done in about actually that'll be done at the end of next week uh, that's the delivery date so fingers crossed that that actually happens um, I really like the guy's work, so I may be willing to uh, give him a little bit of time past that if he's working on it. Other than that, you know, uh, if anybody has ideas or artists that they'd recommend, uh, I'm willing to pay a little bit for it. You know, I know I don't expect people to work for free because I don't work for free. Um, but I would like to get that done pretty quickly. So, uh, all right. Well, that was it for the stream. Uh, thank you very much for everybody that did stop by. And uh, again, free game codes until I run out uh, for all new followers. So tell your friends, anybody who wants free games, uh, come check out the stream. All right. Thanks, guys. Take it easy.